welcome back to Bash Bros on episode 33 of Notorious Pro Wrestling, the TEW Let's Play series where we find out what exactly would happen if Conor McGregor started his own wrestling promotion and we are here for our Banjax pay-per-view. So as with every pay-per-view show that we do, I will run down the match card and all the storylines leading into it. But before we do that, let's talk about news. There isn't any. Great, that's out of the way. But it has been a couple of weeks since you've last been with us. So let's take a look at the wanteds that you have missed. So the last time you guys were here was uh, week one in September. Uh, well, we got a 57 rated show. The big news coming out of that was Tessa Blanchard finally snapped and uh, injured Riho. In week 2 of September, we had a 57 rated show. Quite a lot of stuff on the pre-show just to kind of give people relevant momentum and also keep a lot of our storylines going. On to week 3 then of September. In the main car then we had a filthy generation which is Kelly Ray, Lewis Gervin and Aspen Faith defeat Viper and the NIC. Or Crazy Mary Dobson and Maki Ito defeat uh, Tessa Blanchard and Killer Kelly. In the main event then we had Kenny Williams defeat James Storm. 54 for that one, uh, not as strong but still perfectly acceptable. So that has been what you've missed. Obviously tonight is the Banjax pay-per-view so I will do a quick rundown of all the matches and the storylines leading into them. Greedo Talent Agency has had a lengthy feud with Dynasty and in the final match of that feud, Kenny Williams turned on his old team GTA. Kenny was not happy with the fact that Greedo brought in Mark Andrews to be the star of the faction, believing that he should be the star, that he is the bollocks. Going as far to cost his team a number one contenders match against the Light Coast Gym, it has come to this where Amir Jordan, the person who recommended Kenny join the talent agency, will have to take out his former tag team partner in their match tonight. Crazy Mary Dobson is here in NPW. However, she is a marked woman as Killer Kelly wants to find out who is the baddest bitch of them all. Who is the most lethal woman in NPW? Is it the newly debuted Crazy Mary Dobson or is it Killer Kelly? We are going to find out tonight as these two cutthroat women go head to head after trading blows week after week after week. With the most recent clash going to Mary Dobson in tag team match where she and Maki Ito defeated Tessa Blanchard and Killer Kelly. But who will win tonight? Let's find out. One of our currently longest going storylines is Tessa versus the Jushi Wrestlers. What started as paranoia for Tessa believing that the Jushi Wrestlers were mocking her backstage after a loss has spanned into a vicious blood feud. We originally thought that the Jushis had bested Tessa as she disappeared after losing to Maiko. However, she returned and once again set her sights on Maiko, Maki and Riho. Something inside Tessa has changed and she is more ruthless than ever. As after defeating Rio on Wanted, she put a chair around Rio's throat and stomped down on it, taking her out. Enraged by this, Maki Ito wants blood for what Tessa did to Rio, and not even Maiko can convince her otherwise. So tonight, Maki Ito seeks revenge on Tessa. Ever since Viper has won the Women's Championship, she has had a target on her back. Firstly, she was able to fight off Kaylee Ray. Then she was able to fight off Alpha Female. But is she able to overcome both at the same time as she defends the Women's Championship in a triple threat match? Speaking of inaugural champions, the inaugural tag team champions, the Grizzled Young Vets, turned heel in the finals as they were only able to beat the Mighty Don't Nail after dirty tactics. Grizzly Young Vets have been going on a bit of a bender since winning it, wearing their best tweed suits, guzzling champagne. However, the Mighty Don't Nail have been seeking revenge, causing havoc backstage, seeking the champs. The only way Conor McGregor was able to stop the Mighty Don't Nail from running riot was by giving them the rematch they desired. But the Grizzled Young Vets think they've done nothing wrong and are disgusted that their celebrations have been cut short and that they have to once again prove why they are the best tag team in the UK. 
So tonight, the grizzled young vets defend the tag team championships against the mighty Don't Kneel. And in one of our fan suggested storylines, we have Easton Reese going one on one with James Storm. Easton Reese has been good, but not quite good enough as he just hasn't been able to break through that main event world championship status. And he believes that by asking Doug Williams to coach him, he'll be able to break through that barrier. However, James Storm does not believe Reese is sincere. He believes Easton Reese is using Doug Williams and will cast him to the side the minute he gets what he wants. Adding more fuel to the fire, Easton Reese accidentally cost James Storm a match against Kenny Williams, leading to the two getting into a shoving match. But they will do more than shove each other tonight, as James Storm gets his wish and gets a match against Easton Reese. And in our main event, we finally find out that the master Penta had been talking about for so long is Jake the Snake Roberts. Jake is an NPW and wants to take the heart of Notorious Pro Wrestling. He wants the NPW Championship. Even going so far as to drop Conor McGregor with a DDT to get his boy Penta a chance at the title. But Hero believes this is little more than just the fact that Jake is bitter. He was never able to win the big one. He was never able to be a world champion. And now that he's too old and too decrepit to do so, he needs to rely on someone like Penta to do it for him. Will the hero win against the villain? Will Penta be able to bring his master the heart of NPW? We will find out tonight in the main event. So that is a pretty stacked card. Uh, I kind of realized while I was jotting notes down, I, oh yeah. ever since I had moved the pay-per-views to Sundays, because I don't have that schedule clash anymore, I could really book anything I want, uh, obviously within the realms of my, sh of my roster, but yeah. So yeah, I'm really excited about this. I'm really curious to see how our first pay-per-view without restrictions of double bookings will go. So let's book it then, shall we? Okay, and we are back. Um, live from the Europa. We've had to upgrade our pay-per-view venue uh, because the other ones are too small. This is fucking great. And also, fun side note, I was at the Europa last weekend, the weekend before for Over the Top Wrestling. How funny fucking coincidence is that? Over the top, our local rivals that we're spanking right now. But hey-ho. Uh, <laughs> uh, also, <laughs> uh, <laughs> now that I think about it, uh, their show was called Banjax as well. Banjax 2. Um, so there you go. But yeah, so here's the show. Um, again, for the first time in a long time, I haven't really had people double booked. One exception is a signing which will happen later tonight, a new signing uh, will happen later tonight. So it's had McGregor make the announcement that they had signed, this person had signed. Uh, the only other thing I'm not too happy about is that due to time restraints, I had to drop Amir Jordan versus Kenny Williams onto the pre-show. So let's do it. Okay, so on the pre-show, uh, we had we had Will Hobbs, Carlos Romo and Ace Austin face Dean Allmark and the NIC. So in a superb match, uh, the heels beat the faces in 1507 when Romo submitted Dean Allmark. A 44 rated match, not bad. Oh, I don't like that. Carlos Romo sustained chronic upper back, chronic upper back pain? Oh, no, okay. Uh, so Will Hobbs had a 46, which is decent. Carlos Romo had a 51, which is great. Yes, Austin had a 56, which is great. Uh, Charlie Carter for 43, Oshin Delaney 45, Dean Allmark 44. Oh no, that was not bad. Usually when I see Chronic, uh, that means he could, he won't be out of action. But that's gonna be a long-term injury. <sighs> Shit. Um, damn, I had a push in mind for Carlos Romo too. Next one. Yeah, I know, Doug. I know. Oh, so Carly. Charlie Carter actually caused it. Okay. Fuck's sake, Charlie. Uh, okay, so promo then. Baxter's promo uh, with Amir Jordan saying, Grado and Mark Andrews, look, guys, I want to go out there alone. I want to do this alone. Let me have this. Grado, although reluctant, agrees to let Amir Jordan go out there alone. 
58. Uh, I believe that was Grado then, so that's a good promo from Grado. Uh, Amir Jordan then, uh, so in a fantastic match, uh, Kenny Williams defeated Amir Jordan in 1508. Uh, Amir had a 47 and Kenny had a 54, that's good from Kenny, um, and overall was a 50. On to the main card then, so in a bite that had fantastic heat and decent wrestling, Crazy Mary Dobson defeated Killer Kelly in 1525. Uh, Crazy Mary, or, Mary Dobson had a 48 and Killer Kelly had a 34. Again, really disappointed with Killer Kelly so far. I don't think she's had a single match above 40. Just such a shame. And Crazy Mary Dobson does pretty good. Uh, just shy of kind of the 50 mark. Uh, and then <clears throat> next match then. So in a bout that had fantastic heat and good wrestling, Eastern Reese defeated James Storm in 1517 with a power bomb. Uh, Eastern Reese had a 41 and James Storm had a 44. Uh, so Reese and James Storm don't have good chemistry. That's okay. We'll get past that. They're only going to have this one match. Uh, Reese and Doug, which has been an ongoing problem, are on different sides. They feel face heel divide, but that will change soon. Don't know why I got so excited about that. Uh, 42 segment overall. During this match, then say the ref would go down and. Reese would have the opportunity to use a chair or something like that, hesitate, throw it away, and then just beat James Storm clean. So then post-match then, say, um, Doug would then go up to James and be like, hey, look, this is what happened. Storm would be like, what? Nah, I don't believe you. And Doug's like, no, really. It's, you know, Reese could have hit you with a chair, could have cheated, didn't, and beat you clean. James Storm then shakes hands with Reese. Thus cementing his face turn. So, uh, he also debuted a new gimmick, the Irresistible Force, which has got a great uh, large pen penalty to star quality, apparently. Don't know why, but okay. Penalized for losing the comedy match, yeah. Uh, receives a bonus when looking dominant, yeah. And shouldn't be in the comedy guide, so that's okay. And the tournament's going to be success. So that will then take care of the, pe of the penalty we've been getting for uh, Reese and Doug not being on the same uh, alignment. Next up then, in a bout that had great heat and good wrestling, Tessa Blanchard defeated Maki Ito in 1507 with the figure 4 leg lock. Maki Ito had a 44, Tessa had a 47. Uh, 45 overall, which is good, it's in the parameters. Um, Post-match then, Tessa, um, similar to how she injured Riho, puts a chair around Maki's neck until Maiko makes the save and runs Tessa off. 50 segment there, which is good. So, Conor McGregor, uh, so in an in-ring segment, Conor McGregor comes out to the ring and announces that new, not new Japan, Jesus, that Notorious Pro Wrestling have signed Jay Lethal and Jonathan Gresham. Um, I believe I did mention that ROH had released a bunch of stars uh, these two guys and Maria Manic, and yeah, I signed them up. Uh, I signed Jay because he has no other commitments, so he's pretty much ex currently exclusive to us, which is awesome for a talent of his caliber. And Jonathan Gresham, I was on the fence about signing, and it's already bit me in the ass. He was double booked tonight with PWG Pro Wrestling Gorilla. Um, so yeah, I will probably be leaning more on Jay Lethal than I will Jonathan Gresham going forward. But it adds another great tag team to our blossoming tag division. Uh, while also giving us one, if not two, great single stars too. 83 segment, I mean it's Conor McGregor by himself, just being Conor McGregor, it was going to be awesome. Next up in an exceptional match, Grizzled Young Vets defeated the Mighty Don't Kneel in 2019 when James Drake pinned Shin Haste using the ropes. And that makes defence number two. For the grizzled young vets. Shane had a 54, Mikey had a 55, Zach had a 57, James had a 57. All in all, a 58. Great match. Great match. They outperformed themselves. Um, the tag bonus for both teams probably helped on that. Great match. Just two good tag teams doing good tag team things. Hashtag good tag team things. 
On then to the triple threat, so in about the had a fantastic heat and great wrestling, Viper defeated Alpha Female and Kelly Ray in a 2022. Uh, when Viper pinned Kelly Ray after the Michinoku driver, and that makes defense number four for Viper. Uh, Alpha Female had a 48, Kelly Ray had a 52, and Viper had a 47. Whenever your champion has the worst in ring performance, something's not quite right. <laughs> something's not quite right. 51 overall, uh, again, still a very good match. Just kind of wish Viper would be a bit better. In a backstage promo, then, Penta, Jake and Sonico will leave their mark on NPW. Jake Roberts helped Penta in this segment, which is good. Uh, 57 overall. Good promo. And in the main event, in an exceptional match, Pentagon Jr. defeated Chris Hero in 2504 with the top rope styles clash. In this match, Jake Roberts ran in and hit Chris Hero with a DDT. And Pentagon wins the NPW title new champ penta with a 60 hero with a 62 62 match overall fuck yeah um i've had it in my mind for a long long time penta was going to be the next champion uh he was always going to dethrone chris i believe a good while ago i did say that he just needed a mouthpiece and now that we have jake roberts he has that mouthpiece plus he's also learned english somehow so that also helps not only that as well, like looking at, with a heel champion now, I look at the faces that are coming up, you know, you, Penta has some unfinished business with James Storm, Easton Reese and the coach dog can tie into a title match somewhere down the line, you know, Jay Lethal's now just joined us, so he, there's another match which could be dope. Yeah, so there's three, like, there's three off the top of my head, I'm sure there's more if I look a bit further into our roster, um, but yeah, 100%, absolutely, really looking forward to having Penta as our world champion. And that is the show. 63 overall. I'll take that to some good shit. This could be the first card we maybe had where I just don't see a weak match. I think every match performed, every match either was as good as it should be or performed better than it should have. Only, only Grey Cloud is that obviously Romo got hurt. So then news coming out of Banjack's pay-per-view is for us, the only thing is about Carlos Romo injury, and that is going to be 49 days, so two, roughly two months, Carlos is going to have that. Um, but he won't miss any time, he can work through it. Other news then is also, Kian won the Intercontinental title. Yep. Way to go, WWE. That's a good choice. That is it for another week. Oh, actually, oh, um, so I have one decision down here. This is going to be a bit of a spoiler. Um, so I actually am signing uh, Aussie Open. Aussie Open are a fantastic tag team. They are currently working in Rev Pro. In real life, they're working in Rev Pro. And yeah, great tag team. One of the best tag teams in the UK, if not the world. Uh, so yeah, I am signing them. Um, my... They will not debut right away. They probably won't debut until after next month's pay-per-view. Uh, and I believe the first few is probably going to be with uh, Lyco's Gym. Right, so this has been a long ass episode, so hopefully uh, you're still with me. Next time, you will be back for the Banjax Fallout episode of Wanted, where I will, as always, go over all the storylines I have planned for the next month. Most of them are just a continuation of what we have so far. Don't really think there will be any new storylines. As always, thank you very much for joining me. If you enjoyed yourself, leave a like, do subscribe, do comment, and make sure those comments include anything you want to see, whether that be a storyline, a tag team, a stable, whatever you want to see. With all that being said, I will see you next time on Bash Bros.